I'd like to introduce Suresh Ramaswamy. I met him at the expo and in Carlsbad. It was two brothers meeting. And he wrote the book Just Be. I have been reading it. Truly a joy, truly something fresh, something gifted from spirit, from source. And at this time, I'd like to just turn it over to you, my beloved friend. Thank you, Dennis. Welcome to all of you. It's a real joy to be here. I'd like to thank Dennis for graciously inviting me and being so warm. Uh, and when I came to this place, the Temple of Clarity, I was just, uh, just stunned because uh, we have the amazing vibrations that are here to support us in our transformation and in our recognition of our own infinite nature. So, uh, and all those joining us through live stream, you are very much here. You're very much here because these vibrations are not limited by time and space. So by your, the fact that you're connecting with us through your consciousness, through your intention and through your attention, you are very much here. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, and Dennis, if we could bring up the slides. Oh, okay, you already do. Um, I thought I'd share a little bit about uh, our true nature, our infinite nature. And as we dive into this, really what I'm talking about is nothing new. It's intrinsic to you. You are actually an expert <laughs> because that's who you are right now. It's not something you will be someday. This is baked into you. This is built into you. But we're, what we're doing is merely reacquainting ourselves with what's there. And as I go through some of this information, hopefully uh, that's interesting and useful. But what's really being shared here is way beyond information. It's really this vibration that is intensified when we're all together. This intensification of vibration is really what's going on. And no matter what we're talking about, that's the real thing. And so what I'd like to do at the outset is for us to establish a clear and strong intention to engage at that level so that we mean business, <laughs> so that we are clear within ourselves that we've reached a point where we're ready for it that we really want to go there, that we want to transform, wake up, not learn about transformation, not learn about waking up, and not collect more information, but actually in real time, right now, transform, wake up to our highest nature. And so when you actually 
intend this, you will immediately feel your own being quivering with that knowing that, oh, yes, I know what this is and that's what I'm looking for. So set that intention very clearly because that way you are going to pick up on exactly what serves that intention what supports it, what enhances it, and what makes it real. So having said that, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what that journey that we've been on for a long time. I'll just recap it in a way. It's the journey of transformation. It's the journey of transmutation. It's the journey of transfiguration. What does that look like when it's viewed from the human dimension? So, uh, if we could go to the next slide. So, <laughs> as we live in this dimension, right, the human dimension, there's a lot of uncertainty, right? Even as we sit here today, we could probably think of any number of things which are highly uncertain, right? They're, they're counting right now on the ballots and, you know, there's there's like, oh, what's going to happen? Who's going to get elected, right? Uh, or there's a virus floating around. wonder what will happen with that. Uh, there's so much uncertainty with the economy. What's going to happen to the economy? What's going to happen to the stock market? What's going to happen to my retirement? What's going to happen to my health issue that I am dealing with? All these are very real in a sense, right? When you are in a human body, it's, you feel the pressure. <laughs> and um, some of us might, over time, get into a pretty small box which is what this this slide is showing. Uh, it's a guy living in a very small box. And obviously, I'm talking metaphorically, that you get into this place where it's like me and my tiny setup, right? My little life, my little family, my little neighborhood, my little car, my little job. What's going to happen, right? So there is a natural tendency to be fearful, concerned, very concerned. <laughs> and this can become, if we're not careful, sort of the natural, normal mode of living. Always fear. Wonder what's going to be in the newspaper tomorrow. So it's this habit of living in a little box. And what happens is, if you start staying in that box too long, you start thinking, I am this guy in this little box. What else is there? That's, that's what it is. That's just what it what looks like. Um, and as we look around, we don't have to look too far, right? To see this playing out. Uh, people struggling and trying to make sense of the world, but continuing to stay in a little box and saying, I need to understand everything, but I'm going to stay in this little box. Um, as you transform, this changes. You naturally start expanding. And this box is not going to contain you. And if we could go to the next slide, um, you are going to become pretty big. <laughs> you can see King Kong, he just climbed up a huge building, right? He's not a guy in a small box, and uh, he can just pick up a car and throw it. He's not too worried about anything, really. <laughs> so, when you become big, life looks very different. 
and everything around when you see things differently when you perceive it differently you are naturally going to act differently you're going to engage differently everything is different so the first thing to notice is that the perceptual vantage point makes a big difference. Am I in a small box, medium-sized box, big box? Uh, another way of saying it is, is my consciousness very constricted, limited, small, or is it big, very big, very, very big? And so that's something to look at within because we have a tendency to look outside thinking the answer lies there how's the stock market gonna do tomorrow that's what I want to know but this is the opposite it's not so much looking outside for answers it's looking inside and saying where am I at in my own consciousness and so what does that look like um, in real life? And let's go to the next slide. So big words like consciousness, you know, some of us might be, I don't know what that even means. Uh, you know, I am living a normal life. I'm a good person. I file my taxes before April 15th and, and things like that. I don't break any laws. Uh, I don't know what this consciousness thing is all about. So we actually end up looking like this guy. This guy is educated, successful, high achiever, doing very well. Things are going great. But over time, something interesting happens this guy even though he's doing well finds that one day feels like I am in a box and what does this box look like in real life uh, let's go to the next slide this box if you look at what it looks like you can see each side. There's time pressures, right? I've got 100 things to do, only 24 hours a day. I've got money pressures. Um, there's all kinds of concerns around that. There's relationship pressures. Uh, there's many amazing relationships. And then there's also relationships I'm in my life that where I'm feeling pressure, where it's not quite going the way I think it should go. So we feel the pressure. And then there's physical issues too. Everything was fine. Suddenly I have a neck ache, back ache, headache, this ache, that ache. It's, it's creeping up. So that's a kind of pressure, right? If you're a finite human being, which we're all, of, all of us are, then you have felt these pressures, right? This is what I'm talking about as the walls of this box, right? So this is a pretty real box now, right? It it's, feels pretty real. It's not just some, oh, some interesting concept. This is pretty real. We've all felt it, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. And generally speaking, what do we, what do we think about this? We don't like it. <laughs> We just don't like it, right? It's like I'd rather I didn't have this challenge with my financial situation. I'd rather I didn't have, you know, this other challenge. But there they are. And our tendency is, how do I just make it go away? That's really what I'm looking for. How do I make it go away? So we, without realizing it sometimes, we start putting our energy into how do I change my context? How do I change my context? Meaning, maybe I need to change my job. Maybe I need a new relationship. Maybe I need a new car. 
maybe I need whatever. This will take the pressure off, whatever that pressure is, right? That's what I call the contextual solution. So we can end up investing a lot of energy and time into that and potentially miss out on the transformational possibilities that actually are hidden in this situation. This situation, and the details are going to look different for every one of us, but this life situation or situations are actually designed for us to do what? To move towards transformation. To kind of push us in that direction. And that transformation is not so much about, let me change everything around me. That transformation is, how can I be different in this situation? Which is a fundamental shift. And when you go in that direction, then you start changing. You start changing inside. And your consciousness, going back to that big word, starts changing. It starts expanding. It starts growing. And all of these challenges look different. The exact same challenges, they look different. When seen through the eyes of a being whose consciousness is much bigger. So that process of transformation, I'm just telling you what you already know. We've been going through this forever, but we seem to always want to kind of dodge the bullet. We, we, we want to avoid the transformation and somehow fix the situation, right? But instead, if we go towards transformation, what might happen. Things start changing very fast and actually for the first time we are cooperating with the evolutionary forces instead of resisting them. And when you cooperate with them, things actually go smoother. Things go much better because we grow more easily, more readily, with less resistance. And it's a more pleasant process. It's almost like, why, why didn't somebody tell this to me when I was in elementary school or middle school? I wouldn't be going through all these challenges. Um, let's go to the next slide. So, this is don't want to scare you. This looks like an equation. It is an equation, but um, hopefully it's not too complex. So what does the equation say? It says that the suffering that you actually undergo, right, the actual suffering, equals to the pain, the raw pain, from whatever adversity, whatever challenge is, is playing out. There's, there's some difficulty there, no doubt. This is, a, this is just the raw aspect of it. But then that's multiplied by our inner resistance. It's our wanting to just not deal with it. That component, we don't even see that if we're not conscious. All we see is that there's an adversity, ooh, it hurts. End of story. We don't see this aspect and that's what you start seeing as you develop your consciousness, develop your awareness. You start seeing that you are playing an active role in all these life situations. So it's not just, oh, there's time pressure. Yes, there's time pressure, but then there's a part of me which engages with that, which could potentially be resisting it and that resistance causes the overall suffering to increase. So believe it or not, I am actively contributing to increasing my suffering, which is the last thing I would want to do if I was conscious, if I was conscious. 
if I was aware, I wouldn't do that. But if I'm not aware, then that's very much what we do. That's very much what we do. We resist and that resistance makes it worse. And then we want to just get past it with minimal transformation. We just rather not transform. I just want to get past this challenge. So we end up actually making it worse. And not only do we suffer more, we transform less. Because we're like, I'm going to resist this and change as little as possible. Okay, and try to get through it. I just want to get through it. So this mentality is not uncommon. We've all been there, done that. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the next slide. So funny thing about suffering is um, that within suffering, you can, you actually have a very profound choice. No matter what suffering you're going through, there's a very profound choice. That profound choice is, one, you can go towards being more identified with your finite self. Meaning, the little guy in the little box, that's that's what I'm talking about. You can say, I'm more of that guy in that little box. And it's all hurting so much. So you even try to get smaller. <laughs> okay. And that's choice. That's one choice. The other choice is to actually say, you know what? This is not working. I want to be free. I want to be free of this thing. There's got to be a way towards true freedom. Out of this suffering and all suffering, there's got to be something. And to kind of start finding our way towards that. This, such a small thing, is can make a dramatic difference in the middle of deep suffering. So if, if you're in the midst of some major crisis, serious suffering, always know that you can shift your consciousness and start leaning towards freedom. That simple choice is in your power. It's not a matter of you have to know something or there's something needs to happen. It's a simple choice. Have you had enough of it? Okay, then you can go towards freedom. So this again becomes more possible when we are more aware. And so for, for all of us listening to this, we can easily put ourselves in that, in that uh, category of folks who are highly aware, highly conscious, and with every passing minute, increasing that, increasing that. So, all this is context to understand the journey of transformation so that we can move more confidently and in a more accelerated way towards recognizing our infinite nature. Okay, let's look at the next slide. So here's a quote from uh, an executive at Pfizer of all the places. Uh, it says, people do not change when they see the light. They change when they feel the heat. <laughs> so that's what the previous slide was referencing, right? With that intensity of heat we feel from suffering, that's undeniable. I mean, that thing can really push us. And sometimes that's what we need. So the suffering is never meant as a, anything to cause us difficulty. It's really 
wanting to wake us up. It's wanting us to go towards the light. And I would think of a wise person as somebody who doesn't need a lot of heat, even with a little heat, they're like, oh, yep, I know what I need to do. I need to go towards the light. I need to expand my consciousness. I need to be more aware. They don't need a lot of stuff. They are very wise, very wise. Uh, there are others who simply don't want to go there. And they want more, they need more persuasion by life. And they may need more experiences to convince them that that's where I want to go. They have to reach that own, their own conclusion, right, to go towards that. So this is something we've all been through innumerable innumerable times. But the reason I present it is because if there's any of this dynamic that's left over, we can move through it very, very fast, knowing just this. We don't have to feel like plodding along inch by inch. When you really get this, you can transform very fast with very little suffering but very few life experiences you can really move confidently in that direction so yeah so i mentioned a few terms and uh, let's look at it from another angle here is typically what a person thinks of as their own self, right? This is me, I live in San Diego, I work here, my family looks like this, etc., etc., right? All these things, that defines our experience, day-to-day -day experience. And who is that experience happening to? To me, this self, right? If there's a knee pain, yeah, I know who we're talking about. It's my knees, right? It's We know this very well. And this unknowingly becomes a box that we take for granted. It's everybody buys into it. Even from the moment we're born, we're, we may be told, you are John, this is you. Okay, it looks like this is me. All right. So we buy into this box without necessarily even knowing we bought into it. It's just there and we think this is me, this is it. And this can become a trap of its own. Now let's take a look at the next slide. As we develop our awareness, as we go through life, as we maybe do practices like meditation, something different starts showing up in our consciousness. We start perceiving that, yes, there's this me, but there's something else here. That's definitely not this body. And I know that's me too, because I I'm right there, it's within my experience. So we are being introduced to uh, what I'm referring here to as our essence self. The essence self, you can think of it as the core of our being, who we truly are, our true nature, which there's so much we can say about that. But for now I'll say it's something way beyond all the things we normally associate with our body. So what can we say about the essence self? Is it blue in color, red, pink, green? I can't say anything. I, my car, I can tell you, is a silver colored car. But the essence, hard to say. How tall is it? Well, 
It doesn't really apply. You wouldn't apply height to something that's not physical. How old is it? Well, I can't really tell you. My body, yes, but the essence, well, you can't apply time. You cannot apply all these attributes that we're used to. So it's really hard to say what is it, what it is. It's none of the above. It's none of the above. So the finite is very, very distinct. It can be characterized. It can be very well defined. But on the other hand, the essence, well, there's nothing you can say about it. But as you go inside, it's very real. It's very real. So that's what you start seeing and the more you start seeing that, the more your life starts shifting because previously all your eggs were in that basket. How do I make the finite self happy and have everything going great? Because what else is there? And now you start moving some of those eggs into another basket, so to speak, which is, hey, this essence thing, that's pretty important. And I want to get to know that more. And the more I hang out there, I feel different. I feel fundamentally different. The finite self always is a little bit scared, a little unsettled, a little bit unsure. On the other hand, the essence, I'm always feeling the opposite. Everything feels good, feels very settled feels very complete, feels whole, sounds like a lot of good stuff. I should move a few more eggs into this basket. So um, let's go to the next slide. And the finite self, if you invest in that, you tend to start becoming strongly identified with a sense of separation. It's like, this is me and everything out there, that's not me, that's not me, that's not me, that's not me. Everything else seems like it's not me. So it's all very separate. That's just the natural sort of perception when you are invested in the finite self and when you're identified with it. On the other hand, with the essence self, there is less and less of a sense of separation. There's less identification with this thing that, that's always around. It seems to follow me, this body, but you don't, you're less identified with it as you hang out in the essence. In fact, you look at everything and that looks more and more like I'm connected to that and wait a minute, that too is part of me, that too is part of me, that too is part of me, everything, wait, that's, everything is, everything is really me as when I'm in essence. So it's a very different set of eyes that you have when you look from the essence self versus the finite self. And let's go to the next slide. Yet another distinguishing characteristic is the finite self, since it's wrapped up in a world of this is and that's, there's a lot to do here. <laughs> there's a lot to do. I got to do this and I got to do that. Because, well, I've got to survive, I've got to do well, I've got to excel, I've got to achieve, and I've got to stay well. To do all that, well, I've got a list of 25 things just for tomorrow morning. So this world of doing feels kind of natural to the finite self. It's got to do stuff. Got to do it. And then there's more. And then there's more. On the other side, when you're in the essence self, it's funny, there's no to-do list there. <laughs> it's a world of being. It's a world of being. 
Everything is done. Everything is complete as it is. Everything is perfect. All is well. All is well. You actually feel that in the depths of your being. You feel all is well. All is well. So if all is well, I don't need to run around. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. That kind of thinking drops off. You live in a world of being. And it is hardly dull or boring. For the person who is finite, it feels like I got to be doing something. If nothing else, at least let me play golf. You know, that's, it's always sees in terms of what can I do? What experience can I have? So I feel good. I got to feel good. If nothing else, how about a vacation to Hawaii? That, that, that feels good. So now I got to do that. Always got to do something to feel good. Here in the world of being, totally different. It already feels good. So why go to Hawaii? I don't see why. Why, why go here, go there? Why hunt for experiences? Everything I want is right here. I'm fulfilled. I'm complete. I'm full of love. I'm one. All is well. End of story. That's what it feels like. So this world of beingness is actually our natural state. We've simply gotten caught up in the world of doingness. And simply the whole world is madly scrambling with doingness. And that's what we see around us. So we think, oh, maybe I should be doing something too. But really, we are human beings, right? We are beings first. That's more fundamental to us. That's really what we're missing. So I would go so far as to say, even if you magically get around to doing all the things on your to-do list, right? Even the one with everything on it, even you get through that whole thing, it's still not enough. It's not good enough. Not good enough. So, this world of being is, is a fundamentally different way of living life. And uh, you don't need to know a lot to go there. All you need is this reminder to just be. To just be. Because as essence, you know that already. This is not like yet another thing I have to learn. This is not a learned thing. This is simply reminding you of something that's already within you. So in fact, it's actually easier than the typical things we normally think of doing. I have to go through a five-year program and then I'm going to get a certificate kind of thing. This is built into you. So you can go there right now, directly. You don't need anything else to go there. So put that thought out of your mind that something else is needed first. Nothing, nothing whatsoever is needed for you to go back to your true nature and live primarily as a pure a being, a pure being. So let's look at the next slide. So when you by the way, if you're seeing nothing on the slide, that's good. That's what you're <laughs> supposed to see. So when you live internally from this place of being, what's your internal experience? Very hard to describe, but this slide is my attempt to do that. Where, what do you see here? It's boundless space. There's light. There's nothing that you can pinpoint and say, oh, this is a thing here, right? There's no thing there. It's just the infinitude 
of your being. And this is the internal state that you are in all the time. All the time. Doesn't mean, don't think that this is just some deep meditation or some such thing. This is your state no matter what is going on. Whether you're meditating or working or driving or sleeping or anything. Internally, it's all the same. Always essence, always infinity, always being. And now again, let's go to the next slide. Now you might say, well, am I going to dissolve into that and what's going to happen to my children and you know, who's going to pay the next credit card bill? <laughs> so, uh, so to clarify that a little further, so even though you are in this infinitude, you are still, you can see, hopefully you can see this on the screen. There's a faint outline of a person, right? You can see there's something there. And so even as you are in this internal state of infinitude, you can see your finite aspect as well. You can say, oh yeah, I see my body there. It's here. I recognize it. And all the things associated with the body, where I live, etc., etc., they're all there. So it's not like you've lost touch with them. They're all there. But your primary reality is this infinitude. And so if the phone rings, you can hear it ringing and you can pick it up and you can say, this is so and so. It's, it's, everything works just fine as it turns out. And other people feel like you're still there. But this is all internal. Internally, you're not thinking, I'm John or I'm Mary. You are simply being. You don't have any sense of limited identity and yet you function completely fine in this finite reality. Next slide please. And so the some of the exalted states we've heard of, those are naturally how it feels inside, right? And I'm this slide and the next one, I'm just trying to convey that. This feeling of being in this vast, amazing universe, right? That sense of wonder and awe and feeling just amazingly blissful, feeling the essence of creation as it was meant to be is something you see as 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 you go there and as as you recognize your essence next slide please you live life from this place of exhilaration right you are playing as an infinite being in these fields of light notice how the context has come pretty far from way back when they're looking at the guy sitting in this box. This is not any kind of box here. This is infinity playing in infinity. Right? And what do you think that feels like? It feels amazing. It feels like, oh, this is what I've been looking for all over the place. And now this is real. And this too is actually natural. It's actually part of who we are. It's simply that we've gotten a little distracted and a little caught up in a very tiny, tiny reality. And so the moment we say, I want to be free, you are free because you are intrinsically free. And so this quote 
helps from Lao Tzu. When I let go of what I think I am, I become what I might be. So what keeps us trapped? It, if you keep thinking, if you keep thinking in a small finite way, that keeps us trapped. If you just let that go, you will naturally start experiencing your essence because you're not limiting it. You, you kind of just drift into your essence. So the entire journey becomes very ironical. You know, we start asking, how can I get free? How can I get free? But then we realize, why am I keeping myself trapped is a better question. Because I'm inherently free, but I am choosing to keep myself trapped. Why am I doing that? And so we suddenly say, wait a minute, that's, I got it. So now I'm going to stop thinking in limited ways and ease into beingness, ease into my true nature, ease into infinity. And let's now go to the next slide. So, if you're in the middle of a forest, right, lush, green, rich with life, As you become very comfortable with living in this place of beingness, you suddenly notice that Earth itself, as it turns out, is just an amazing place. It's teeming with life. Even if you go to a forest like this, a square inch, you will find so many species right in one square inch and you will find this vibration of freedom of essence is all around you actually all around you and you start noticing that and tuning in with that and simply hanging out with that and enjoying that in a bigger grander way rather than simply thinking Oh, this amazing stuff is out there somewhere maybe you know past in some other galaxy and I wanted to bring us back to this slide as we start wrapping up to show that it's it's right here so don't be thinking over there or out in the future it's over here and it's now so um, I'm, I'm, I want to keep uh, plenty of time for questions. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts as well. Here's another funny quote from Winston Churchill. He says, men occasionally stumble over the truth, but most of them pick themselves up and hurry on as if nothing has happened. To me, this is just hilarious because um, we often like to th think of truth as something very difficult, profound, requires a long journey, it's going to be arduous, it's going to be tough. But in reality, I think we're stumbling over truth all the time, all the time. And we simply discount it, we ignore it, we simply act like we don't terribly or not interested in it. Uh, and other times we're complaining that I'm really, you know, really looking for this thing. So we want to revisit our experience, day-to-day -day experience, and look for these nuggets of truth that are all right there. They're all right there. You don't need to go anywhere. And as you recognize them, you will deepen your awareness of them, 
and they will also expand to more and more of your day instead of just being a little slice here a little slice there it expands until all your day is you're swimming in this ocean of infinity right that's what life looks like which is absolutely marvelous uh, without without feeling fear we can look at am i you know are there any boxes looking around because now that i know my deeper truth i can go there more easily and come out of that box so much more easily because i have the assurance of something vaster deeper truer and that gives us a lot of power there is a lot of power when you are recognizing your infinite nature so all right <laughs> Well, <clears throat> this is um, like Alice. I heard s this in different ways other times, and my own personal. I'm just addressing a question to you. I personally f have felt this in levels. You know, you go along, and you know, I, I'm totally into this freedom thing. Yeah, let, let's just be free of all this stuff, and when you see it, let it go on and on, and you get just, just to this level. And you go, yeah, I'm there, I'm here. And then something happens and you're, you know, you're in another containment and you have to move through another level again. And, you know, one day you're there, the next day it's a, it's a battle or, you know, a struggle. Through another and then level would again. you like to address that? <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's a great point. Uh, when we actually start moving earnestly in this direction, um, we have this experience of going back and forth, back and forth. Some days we're like, I'm there and I will, this feels so good and so natural. I, I don't think I'm gonna ever come out of this. This is, I'm there. And uh, a few days, few weeks, few months might go by and something happens. And we start actually uh, noticing that this is actually a gift when something happens that shakes us out of this place that there is some corner in our consciousness which needed to be also brought into the light and so we're better off knowing that and life is remarkable because it takes care of that we don't have to work on that part, right? It's perfectly cues up what we need, each one of us, uh, for that further expansion. But the beauty is, each time we engage with a challenge, we're not the same person engaging with the challenge. Even though we feel like, oh, I got a little bit caught up in this, but we still have ready access to our infinite nature because we've been swimming in that and we're still wet, we still have that. So we can increasingly leverage that for the next successive thing that sh shows up. And this becomes so powerful that you know that anything that comes up literally in a matter of moments it's 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 gone it's gone as in you are back in your infinite nature so it's simply a matter of oh this this kind of needs attention okay good done uh no matter what's playing out so but this going back and forth is a, a process uh, but as we develop the dynamics changes. First of all, we're not so scared when it pumps when it comes up, and secondly, we're much more efficient and optimal in getting that expansion out of it with less drama and with less suffering. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
So um, these boxes, once you become aware of the boxes and you give it attention, then it just goes away? Or like, what do you do when mm -hmm. you become aware of these boxes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So usually what happens is these boxes, there's two aspects to it. One is there's something in the environment which is pushing, right? The walls of the box. And then there is the person inside the box, right? So these these are these are both things. First of all, we recognize as we become more aware, these pressures, we are able to more tune into what's really going on there. So anything that's happening is not what it appears to be. So literally anything we might say, oh, I'm having this challenge at work. Mm -hmm. There's some conflict with a coworker, let's say. Okay, that's the first read of that situation, right? It feels like, oh, I'd rather this conflict was not happening. Mm -hmm. And, but as your awareness develops, you can see into that situation and through that situation. So the situation actually shifts just by your deeper seeing. So you can see everybody involved. You can see where they're coming from. You can see the dynamics of what's going on. Instead of all these finite entities acting in a rigid way, which is how we normally see it, you start seeing it as waves of energy in flux. You see light and you see essence because all these beings are actually infinite beings too. When you see it that way, it actually feels very different inside. It can still feel like, yeah, there's something not so good going on here, but it is a different kind of pressure. It, that wall becomes like a semi-permeable membrane. Previously, it was like a hard wall. You can't go through a hard wall, but when it becomes a membrane, it feels different, very different. Energy is flowing. That's the first thing. You see the situation and you read it, differently. Second of all, you look at who is in this situation. So in other words, you look at who am I really? Oh, I was thinking I am this kind of person, this kind of employee, this kind of whatever. And that starts dissolving because the pressure is not just coming from outside. Our who we are is feeling that pressure. So th there's a small guy inside. So when that small guy starts dissolving into essence, that pressure is not the same. So now that box is no longer a box, right? It's completely changed. It's a, seen as a configuration of light and I am essence in this particular configuration of light at this point in time. And it's night and day, it feels very different. Now we, very important point, it's not like we now go to passivity and we say, well, there's no problem here. Okay, I'm gonna take a nap. Um, instead, from this vantage point, we engage. We engage. So nothing about beingness is meant to be suggesting that we take a passive approach to life. Beingness is not passive. It's very dynamic. It's very active. So in this context, we would engage with that as a being who is now connected with something much bigger rather than a small agenda me and my career agenda, just as an example. We now would look at it as me as a part of a vast system. And now, what is it that's most appropriate, most useful, most impactful, and for the highest good? And there will be something there in terms of external ways of engaging, 
something needs to be said, some behavioral thing, whatever needs to be. In other words, it will look like a doing outside, but internally it's always being. The doing is coming out of the being. That is how we're supposed to live. It's not that we're not supposed to do anything. That's totally not what I'm saying. We are meant to be doing a lot of things, but we're not meant to be doers doing stuff. We're meant to be beers. We're meant to be beings who happen to be doing stuff, who happen to be engaging with the world, with this reality. And it's a completely different unfoldment. And when we see this happening more and more, we have a lot of confidence in this. So we move in that direction right away. Uh, as soon as we feel any kind of pressure, we're like, well, I, know, I have a strategy. I know what to do. I need to see this from a deeper place. I need to see myself as essence. I need to then engage. And things unfold beautifully. So that's a great practical question. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. Surrendering, letting go, all these are very key things. That's really a prerequisite to go into that space of beingness. And yes, there's an innumerable approaches actually to find our way back there. Uh, whether it's something more somatic or for some it's more intellectual, that I need to really think about this and find my way there through thinking, although that's full of traps. But yet it is a, a legitimate way uh, where we can find our way back. Uh, and for some of us, it's directly engaging with consciousness itself, uh, which is, you could say, the source of everything. Why not go there? Because that has the totality of understanding. If you can engage with that, you are looking at what's going to be extremely optimal, which takes into account everything, rather than little me trying to figure out what is the best path for me? What do I know? I don't know anything really. So instead of relying on that little mind, you rely on this infinity and tap into that. And for some of us, ascended masters provide that leap to get to infinity because ascended masters have more, you could say, in a sense, they're more accessible and they are they're abstract and at the same time they have enough that we can connect with them. So that is yet another incredible uh, way to find our way back. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Suresh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. I did taste infinity. I saw the box so clearly in that slideshow. I was surprised and then the other slide with the body and the infinity side by side was just, that was like, oh boy, the light bulbs were going on and in this room, all over the place. This is only the beginning of something new and many interactions with Suresh. And so stay in touch, stay tuned in to what's happening here. These events are ongoing.